I'm David Knorr of Relationship Economics, and this is Connecting the Dots. This episode, Reinventing Your Business Model. Did you know that 11 of the 27 companies born in the last quarter century that grew their way into the Fortune 500 in the past 10 years did so through business model innovation? In 2009, one of our fundamental recommendations to clients of varying sizes and industries is to get creative. Get creative in how you engage your current prospective clients. Get creative in your suite of products or services, and particularly the perceived value add you deliver. Get creative in where you identify great talent and the manner in which you put that talent to the most effective use. One way to encapsulate enormous amount of creativity is to focus your efforts on reinventing your business model. In 2003, Apple introduced the iPod and the iTunes Store. In just three years, this combination became a $10 billion product and 50% of Apple's revenues, catapulting Apple's market cap from $1 billion in early 2003 to over $150 billion by late 2007. In the process, Apple did much more than take an interesting technology and jazz up its look and feel. The adaptive innovation that we often refer to was making music digital downloads, subsequently extending that to music videos, TV shows, and now even full-featured movies, much easier and certainly a lot more convenient. To do that, Apple reinvented its business model to combine hardware, software, and a service. In essence, they gave away the blades, low-price iTunes music, to lock the consumer into a higher price razor, the iPod, iPhone, iTouch, iDog. What they created was a market-changing approach to value promised and value delivered. Adaptive innovation, which often blurs the line between producers and consumers, and in the process reinvents business models, have reshaped entire industries and redistributed billions of dollars of value. One of our clients from several years ago, a $400 million public traded manufacturer of household products, has lost 70% of its revenue because two college students figured out how to bypass their value chain of traditional manufacturing abroad, distribution, wholesale to retail, to an online model direct from the manufacturer to the end customer thus reinventing their business model and scaling to $100 million in revenue in less than two years. Retail discounters such as Walmart and Target, which entered the market with really innovative business models, now account for 75% of the total valuation of the retail sector. Low cost, or often what's called no-frills airlines, grew from a blip on the radar to an estimated 60% of the market value of all carriers. So. Why are stories of business model innovation from well-established companies like Apple so rare? A recent American Management Association study determined that no more than 10% of innovation investments at global companies is focused on developing new business models. Yet everyone is talking about it. A recent survey by the Economist Intelligence Unit reported that over 50% of the executives believe business model innovation will become even more important to success than product or service innovation. Just last year, an IBM survey of corporate CEOs echoed these results. Nearly all the CEOs polled reported the need to adapt their business models. Another two-thirds said that the extensive changes were required. In these economic times, can you as a business leader afford not to look at business model innovation to address permanent shifts in your market landscapes? So why is it so difficult to pull off the new growth that business model innovation can bring? Two fundamental problems. Lack of consistent definition, very few people truly understand the dynamics and process of business model development. And number two, few companies understand their business model well enough. The premise behind its development, the natural interdependencies, its strengths and limitations to really know when they can leverage the core business and when success requires a new business model. At the onset, a new business model can often look unattractive to internal or external stakeholders. So. What can you do? How can you embark on exploring this unknown in your business? Here are three simple steps to get started. Number one, start by actually not thinking about the business model, but the opportunity to satisfy a real customer who needs a job done. Number two, construct a blueprint of how your company will fulfill that need at a profit. Three, compare that model to your existing model to see how much you would have to change it to capture the opportunity. Once you do that, you'll know if you can use your existing model and organizational structure, or if you need to separate out a new unit to execute a new model. Let me ask again, 
in these economic times can you afford not to look at business model innovation? Visit us at relationshipeconomics.net slash adaptive innovation to learn more. I'm David Norwood, Relationship Economics, and this has been another episode of Connecting the Dots.